Jesus, that's quite remarkable. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, as you've seen by the title, I've bought a thing. Let's take the cover off and show you. So this is my new milling machine, it's a Boxford VM30. Currently it's three phase, so I need to convert it to single phase and hopefully everything else works okay on it. I might do a few adaptions to it to make it a little bit more user friendly, but we'll see what happens along the video. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. So we're just at the back of the mill here, we're trying to work out what each wire does on the control panel. This is the start button, these two here. So I was actually wrong just then. This is the start, that's the signal wire, so it goes either way, and that's the stop wire there. So now we can work out what the emergency stops are. There's two feet on the bottom of the machine. There's one, that's one. So we've already found it actually. So now we've worked out roughly what all of these wires do, or switch wires, uh, I'm going to take this old contactor off here because I don't need that anymore. That's the wire for the motor there, so I'll just keep that separate. And this wire here is the power in. I'm going to take that off uh, and put a new wire in there. So this here is a little transformer. Now I think I can run it on single um, phase 220 volt here looking at this. So I'm going to try and see if that will work. Um, if it does I can keep this in. This powers the light on the side of it which runs down to 12 volt. So it'd be nice if I could keep that. This is the VFD that he's given to me. What my plan is is to try and fit it on the back wall here out of the way. Because of the depth of this VFD, it hasn't left me much option on how to mount this. Now, I was going to try and mount a plate in here and around the back and screw it through the sides, but I don't think there's enough material to do that. And the, But what I realised was that if I measure from the back wall here to the front, that's 8 inch and the same on the other side. Now if I measure from where I measure to the front to here, that's eight and a half inch to the lowest point. So I've got another half an inch clearance. Better than that, yeah, I've got this extra bit of clearance here on the ways or the dovetail, I think it's called. Um, so there's actually about eight and a half inch of clear, uh, sorry, about an inch and a half of clearance up to that point. So if I drilled two 10mm holes in the back, it should be more than a fine to do this. So it's been quite difficult to mark everything out in there, so what I decided to do is I've laid some tape on here, I've drawn it out, marked the holes, I'm going to put it on there now and uh, just transfer the holes. So that's it in the place there, it's level, I used a small spirit level, because I can't fit anything too wide in there, and I checked it, and I've checked the holes, so I'm just going to punch the first top two first. I've cut all four bolts down now, I'm going to try and fit this which is going to be quite fiddly. I think that should be long enough. I've just crimped a ferrule on each end of the live wires going towards the motor. So I'm just going to wire these in now.
So this looks quite jumbled, but we've got the live wire coming in, 220 volt. We've got it going into three phase there, 220 volt coming out. So we need to, so what I need to do now is change the motor to delta above. I'll show you how to do that. We've got the earth connected to there. I'm going to run one of these wires as another earth to the box here. And then there's another live because I need a live for this. And then I also need a live for a socket for the back of this. So this motor is currently wired in, I think it's called star, and then you get delta. So basically these three little copper pieces here need to be moved to cross there to there. And that will change this from high voltage to low voltage. Now normally you need to see if the motor is rated for dual voltage, which this one of course is, but not every three phase motor is. So some of the early ones are like three phase 440 volt only. So see, we put one up there like that, and we can put that back on. So we're back now. The This is wired, like I said, in Delta now. We've got all of the terminals crossing as opposed to running down there. Now this is set up for 220 volt. We can put this cover back on now because we're done in here. So I've got it all wired in here now. Everything's earthed up to here. I've got the spare two live and neutral wires plumbed in there so they're not going to touch anything. I'm going to try and turn this on and see if it works before I do anything more. That's good, so it works. So now I can start wiring in all the switches, which is these wires, and the e-stop, which is those wires. Now it gets a bit simpler now because I can put this cover back on here for the high voltage stuff, and then I can just work on these small panels here. Right, now we've got some of the safety. I'll cable tie everything up when I'm finished, but for now, let's start wiring some of this in. I'm going to come back to this wiring later in the video, so don't pay any attention to this. So I have the machine running now. But because they're not latching switches, it, it won't stay on unless I hold the button and this one doesn't work how I want to. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a latching switch like this one, but I'm going to have one where it's got a stop in the middle, forward and reverse. And then this one, I think I'm going to replace for an e-stop because you can never have too many. So now that's done and because I don't have any switches, I'm going to focus on getting this working so I can get the light working. I would also like to wire a socket into the front face of this. The reason being will become apparent in the next video I do. So a little tip, if you're struggling to get these grommets into things, just heat them up with your air gun. Obviously be careful of your hands, but you know if it's hot in your hands, it's probably going to be hot enough to uh, go into it. It's so much more malleable when they're like that. Still looks pretty messy but I've wired this up to 220 volt everything's earthed I've got annoyingly I had to put two wires in with no ferrules because I couldn't get them both in but that's to there that's all done as I said earlier on let's try it and see if the light works I'm sure you can see already but brilliant so that's good so that's all done now I'll go and get something and I'll check this socket now as well 
well that's good everything's wired up correctly as well if you are wondering what this socket's for I might show you at some point throughout this video so you should have to keep your eyes open for that it's all tidied up now I still need to finish off this bit but I think what I'm going to do is concentrate on the front panel now to remove this front panel I think I need to take this gauge off first I don't think they're meant to be wet somehow. These switches did have three phase going through them. Or well, that one did at least. Jesus, that's quite remarkable. I'm a bit unsure what to do here because there's obviously a leak it's all wet around there as well I know I'm not going to be using it in anger but I hopefully wouldn't want to touch this again in years part of me is wondering do I just take the four bolts off either side and see if that will lift up off and if it will see if there's a seal under there I mean everything's metric on it so it should be a normal size seal but there's also a seal there that looks like something's wrong with it. It's a hard one. I don't want to cause more problems, but then also I don't want that to leak through there again. I hope I don't regret this, but I am going to just undo those two bolts, those four bolts, and see what happens. So it's quite a nice design really, very simple, very basic. So there's two taper roller bearings, one in here and one at the bottom. And then it looks like this cap holds the seal in. The seal was full of thick grease. So I'm wondering if the grease had sort of stopped itself from being able to seal. So I'm going to just have a quick look at that. I'll take it off and see what the seal number is. If it's a common size, I might just order a new one. <laughs> So it's the next week now and the seal that I took out last week that I think was causing the problems has gone fairly hard. So what I did is I bought a new seal for this, but while we've got the shaft out, the spindle out, I'm going to now grease this up because I've cleaned everything. I'm going to grease it up, put that back in. I fitted a new SKF seal in there. I'll just bolt this down. I've tightened it so that I can't feel any play. The only thing is, because I've put all new grease in there and I've packed it right out, it's uh, it's a bit stiff to turn, but it's just nipped, just where I can't feel any play. So I'm going to leave it like that, and you can actually tighten this from the top without taking this whole gearbox assembly off, so if I need to tighten it in the future, I can. So I've just put something in there to hold it open so the belt can go in. So this is the new toggle switch that I've bought, so I can do forward and reverse on it. They come apart like you push them down and twist, push it down and twist like that. So put that in there, and then push down and twist. Right, so that's in place now. Now all I need to do is tighten up those two little screws there, and then they clamp it onto the back plate here. It's a little bit hard to see some of this wiring, but this old switch is going. I just don't have the new one yet. I also don't have a suds pump, so it doesn't matter that much. 
but you've got the the communication wire or the signal wire there and it's connected to both switches see these two as two separate switches and this was the start wire originally so that's forward and then what was the stop wire in this switch is now reverse so now on this new switch I've got forward and reverse I've got a kill switch to go in here now remarkably it's cheaper to buy them like this in a box than to buy it out of a box I don't know how that works but nonetheless it's cheaper that way so we're going to take this out so that's wired in now I'm going to tie these up out of the way these two wires or these few wires here So I bought some different bootlace terminals. These one, these ferrules or bootlace terminals, they've got a little plastic coating or plastic edging around them to protect you from the live wire. But these ones haven't, so they should go in these holes a bit easier. Right, so that's that's the signal wire, the start wire and forward, and start wire and reverse sorted. I've got this all wired in now. I took it off of the safety stop function, which is this one because it needs to be reset every time and I don't have a reset button but the reset is also stop so I've just wired it into the reset terminal here so it still stops it on the E stop I can't however work out how to get reverse working forward works fine but reverse will not work um, it's nothing to do with the, the switch because I've switched the wires round so I don't know why it won't work but I can't spend any more time on it today I've just finished tidying this wiring up. So the last thing to do is put the grease in here. Now it's, it's, what do they call it? Like, it's grease at the moment and then when it gets warm it goes to like oil. Spoiler alert, this didn't actually work. I tried it twice in hot water and it didn't melt it at all. So then I tried it in a pan as you can see and it didn't work either. I then had the bright idea to use two funnels. One to pour it in initially and the second one to act as a vacuum pot essentially with an airline. As you can see here I pushed them together and then blew down it and it blew all the grease straight into the gearbox. It actually worked quite well, although it was quite messy. I'm pleased with the progress on this mill, although I'm a little bit annoyed that I can't get it to go into reverse, but if you have any ideas, drop a comment below. I read all the comments, so yeah, if you, uh, if it, if you have any ideas, let me know. I will be doing one more video on this, but it's quite specific what the video will be. Let's see how good your pause skills are right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.